Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is second lecture of this dynamic programming series. And in this lecture, we are going to uh, study recursive uh, staircase problem. But this time, we would look at how we approach a dynamic programming problem recursively. So there are two ways to approach a dynamic programming problem. One is iteratively, which we have seen for the same problem in the previous lecture, and now in this lecture, we would see how. Uh, we approach a DP problem recursively. This is important to understand because we would be using recursive approach to solve most of the problems including digit DP. So this is important for you guys to uh, understand recursive way of approaching a DP problem. So let's start directly the approach. I'm not going to explain the problem as I have already explained the problem in the previous lecture. So if you are coming uh, if you are new here, so just go and check out the first lecture of this DP series. So uh, the problem, you know, you have to tell the total number of ways to reach the nth stair starting from 0th stair. All you can do is take a jump of 1 or 2 and you have to tell total number of ways. So the function stairs, uh, which is having a return type int, will tell you the total number of ways to reach nth stair right while you are uh, approaching or solving a problem recursively first of all the first thing you do is uh, write down the base cases so the base cases would be when n is equals to either 1 or n is equals to 2 if n is equals to 1 that is you have to tell total number of ways to reach first stair starting from 0 the answer would be 1 so we would return n otherwise the total number of ways to reach second stair is 2 so if n is equals to 2 we would return 2 that is n so this is the uh, this is the base case if n is equals to 1 or 2 we would directly return n now the second thing we do is divide and conquer uh, so we have write down the, uh, the uh, base case and now we would solve for n itself recursively so if you are on the nth stair or uh, if you want to reach the nth stair you can come to the nth stair from either n minus 1 or n minus 2 because these are the only two options available to us either we can jump once or twice or we can jump uh, one stair or two tier, uh, two stairs at a time so to reach n i must be coming from n minus 1 or n minus 2 so if I know what is the total number of ways to reach n minus 1th stair that would contribute to uh, the solution of n as well because if there are x ways to reach n minus 1th stair then all I have to do is take one jump of length 1 as more and then I'll be on nth stair. So the total number of solution we would first initialize result to be 0 result of reaching nth stair and then result would be added with total number of ways to reach n minus 1th stair because from n minus 1th stair we can reach nth stair by taking a jump of length 1 so if i take a one length jump then i can reach from n minus 1 to n that is why to reach nth stair total number of ways would be uh, will be derived from total number of uh, ways to reach n minus 1th stair now if our last step was of length 2 then we must have been on n minus second stair so if we know total number of ways to reach n minus second stair then that would also contribute to nth stair number of ways because if there are y ways to reach n minus second stair then all we have to do is take a jump of length 2 and then we will be on the nth stair so that is why the total number of ways or to reach nth stair uh, will be also having the total number of ways to reach n minus second stair these are the only two options available to us when we are on the nth stair either we can take a jump of n minus 1 or we can take a jump of n minus 2 so we are done uh, recursively calculating the result now result variable contains the result or total number of ways to reach the nth stair now finally we would return the result 
previously the iterative way we have seen uh, the running time of iterative approach was because of n that is linear in n but here uh, this approach is actually exponential it is actually 2 raised to power because of 2 raised to power n because from each uh, from uh, from each node or from each function we are making two recursive calls that is why the running time of this algorithm is actually exponential so let's see why the algorithm is actually exponential you see if I had to calculate for n is equals to 6 I would make two recursive calls for n is equals to 5 and n is equals to 4 they will return me result and then I'll be adding those and then returning but to calculate result of n is equals to 5 I would again make two recursive calls to n is equals to 4 and n is equals to 3 so goes for any other uh, n except for 1 and 2 because 1 and 2 are base case so these would be our leaf nodes now there are two important properties you should know uh, of uh, dynamic programming first property is uh, sub problem overlapping properties the property is that you see if you need to calculate a result of 5 this thing this whole thing would be executed 5 would make a call to 4 3 4 would make a call to 3 2 and 3 would make call to 2 1 and so on so this whole subtree would get executed subtree 5 right and if you need to calculate uh, for n is equals to 4 this tree would be executed so you see a uh, result of 5 and 4 actually overlap because to calculate 5 you need to calculate subtree 4 and to calculate result for 4 of course you have to execute this so this and this part actually overlap so sub problem 5 and 4 actually overlap with each other so this is one of the property of dynamic programming that the sub problems actually overlap with each other that is why uh, saving the result of one sub, uh, sub problem helps calculating second uh, sub problem we will uh, look at that in a second the second property is uh, optimal substructure property what optimal sub, uh, substructure property says that to calculate the result of a problem you can break the problem into sub problems and then solve those sub problems and then using the result of those sub problems you can calculate result of actual problem so what we are doing here for calculating result of n is equals to 6 we are breaking the problem into two sub problems that is for n is equals to 5 and n is equals to 4 if we calculate the result of sub problems then using the result of sub problem we can actually calculate the result of actual problem so this is optimal substructure property so apart from the these two properties the important thing is that if you look at these nodes each node is having two children except the leaf node of course so this if i say is at le level zero so you'd see there is only one node this is level one so there are two nodes this is level three so there are in total four nodes this is level uh, zero one two sorry this was level two and this was this is level three so there are roughly eight nodes not exactly eight because this is not having any children because this is the base case but uh, if you see if you build the tree for like n is equals to 100 you would see the ith level contains a, as la uh, as most as 2 raised to power i nodes or 2 raised to power i minus 1 node no ith level contains 2 raised to power i nodes so the overall complexity of this becomes exponential because each node is having two children and ith level contains 2 raised to power i nodes so uh, if there are n level the total number of nodes would be 2 raised to power n or if talking ex uh, asymptotically the algorithm is actually exponential because each thing you see uh, here you are making call to 3 again 3 again 3 uh, for n is equals to 3 you are making 3 calls to calculate result for n is equals to 3 you are making two calls to calculate n is equals to 4 and 
if you build the tree for n is equal to 100 you would see many of the nodes are being calculated again and again uh, for uh, for many n we are calculating result uh, more than one times that is what makes it exponential because for the same things we are calculating again and again so what we can do is actually once we have calculated the result we can actually save it so we would have a dp array so to calculate 6 you would make 2 recursive call to 5 and 4 so suppose you made a call to 5 uh, until this function call is completed you won't go towards this right so you you went to 5 now 5 would make 2 recursive call 4 and 3 so you went to 4 then you went to 3 then you went to 2 but 2 is a base case so it would return 2 then after this part is completed it would make a uh, recursive call to 1 so it would return 1 so these two node have returned 2 and 1 so it would calculate its result and for n is equal to 3 result would be 3 but before returning what it would do it would save its result so for n is equal to 3 we would save result 3 in the array now it would return 3 4 would make a call to 2 it would return 2 so 3 and uh, 2 would become 5 so before returning 5 this would also save the result in dp array now it would return 5 now this part has completed so it would make recursive call to 3 but 3 instead of going down what it does it before making any recursive call it checks whether result of 3 is pre-calculated or not so it would look in the in the dp array and it will see okay result of 3 is already saved so i don't have to make recursive call i can return the result from dp array so it would return the result from dp array and instead of making recursive calls it would direct return the result now these two nodes have returned their result so it would calculate its uh, result so in the dp array at index 5 we would save the result of uh, n is equals to 5 now since the left part is completed it would make recursive call to 4 now since the result of 4 is already saved in the dp so it would check whether uh, result of 4 is saved or not so since result of 4 is saved because we have pre-calculated we have already calculated for n is equals to so uh, sorry for n is equals to 4 so we would not make any recursive calls we would directly return from here and we would return uh, from the dp array the result of 4 is this so we don't have to go down so what happens is that you see uh, all of for any n we are calculating result only once and then we are directly returning the result so what would happen is that for each n we are calculating only once has the uh, running time of this would also become linear so how we have to upgrade our recur uh, recursive solution to dp solution is this the base case won't change if n is 1 or 2 or basically you can write if n is less than equals to 2 you directly return n and yep initialize the dp every element of dp with minus 1 so minus 1 which means this uh, for n is equals to this we haven't calculated yet so if dp of n is not equal to minus 1 which would indicate that yep dp of n is already calculated so we would directly return from there see we won't make any recursive calls we would directly uh, return the result from dp array otherwise what we would do uh, if dp of n is equals to minus 1 it would indicate the result of n has not been calculated yet so we would calculate the result of n as stairs of n minus 1 plus stairs of n minus 2 and then we would save it in the uh, dp array at index n indicating that yes this state or dp of n has calculated now and finally return from dp of n so this way we have uh, converted normal recursive uh, program or code to dp code and which initially was exponential now runs in big of n time so this is how we approach a problem a dp problem first we write down its recursive uh, code and then to uh, change it into uh, a dp1 all you have to do is declare a dp array and check if the n of dp of n contains minus 1 or not if it doesn't contain minus 1 which means the result is already calculated and saved in dp of n so directly return there before making any recursive calls otherwise calculate the result and then return it so this was all about the recursive approach of this problem we would also be 
usually we would be taking the problem and solving that recursively because writing down the recursive approach is much easier uh, in terms of thinking than iterative so and also we will be solving the dp uh, dg dp problems using recursion so it was important for for me to explain the dp approach so thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you